Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.0 and Heat Blur Simulations F14B Tomcat Module. Welcome to tutorial 4, Air-to-Air -air Missiles Pilot Commanded. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can employ air-to-air -air missiles, such as the Sidewinder, the Sparrow, and the Phoenix, using only controls in the front cockpit and without assistance from Jester or from your Rio. Uh, you might occasionally need to do this if you're in WVR or within visual range combat. Uh, of course, if you're doing BVR, you absolutely need the assistance of your Rio. So if you find yourself merged with some enemies and uh, you, know, you can see them uh, or you know exactly where they are, this is how you will employ the different missiles at your disposal. Now, this is going to require that you have your target designate switch uh, configured, uh, and also you probably want the PLM switch, the pilot lock-on mode switch, configured as well. Uh, apart from that, just the normal weapon select switch uh, and the controls that you have in the cockpit for turning on master arm and switching missile modes. Uh, I'm only going to des uh, describe the uh, normal missile employment modes today. Uh, it is possible to bore sight certain missiles and even fire some of the radar guided missiles in a flood uh, bore sighted style mode. We're not going to cover any of that today. Today we're just going to uh, cover the standard employment either with radar lock or in the case of the Sidewinder I'm going to demonstrate both with and without a radar lock. So without any further ado let's uh, jump into the cockpit and one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Jester to leave me alone. <laughs> so I'm telling him to be inactive. He's now going to be quiet for a little bit. Now, uh, this was an air start. I'm just going to pause the, the simulation again quickly to go over some things. This was an air start. So during an air start, uh, your Sidewinder cooling and your missile prep switches are already on. If they weren't already on, as we enter air-to-air -air combat, we'd want to turn these on. Sidewinder cool doesn't take too long. It cools down the, uh, the heat seeker head of the missile and will improve the quality of your lock. Um, and the missile prep, that's required for both the Sparrows and the Phoenixes. It takes uh, approximately two minutes for them to be ready. Now, we can tell that all of our missiles are ready because they're showing up as white uh, here just now. That means that they are ready to use. Uh, and when we actually have one of the missiles selected, it will show checker. Now, if I bring up my kneeboard, I can actually go through the current uh, loadout that I've got. So on 1A, shown here, I've got a Sidewinder. 1B, I've got another Sidewinder. Uh, I'm also carrying fuel tanks. I've got Phoenixes on Station 3. I've got a Sparrow on Station 4. Another Phoenix on 6. Fuel tank on 7. And then on 8A and 8B, we also have Sidewinders. Oh, I'm descending towards the ground right now. So before we proceed, let's go ahead and get set up. We've got to make sure that we are in air-to-air -air mode, which we already are. We're going to turn master arm to on. We're going to use our weapon select switch. And first option is gun. Up again, I'm in sidewinder. And I'm going to try and employ the sidewinder just now without a radar lock. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on... Uh, the TID repeater, so that we've got information from the radar there. I can see that I do have some targets to my front and we're closing on them. Let's accelerate and make our way towards them. So uh, we have this cross displayed near the top of the HUD. That cross is the uh, the ADL, the Armament Data Line. I don't know why it's called the line because it's actually a cross. And what we want to do is we want to place that over the target and use the uncage switch because that's where the seeker is looking by default. We can also make sure our mode is in normal. Normal means it is doing a scan, uh, at least when we uncage it'll be doing a scan. Yeah, you see seam lock. Uh, if I'm in uh, bore sight mode it will just be locked to the bore sight. So I'm accelerating just now and let's make sure that we get towards these airborne targets. Yeah, they should be basically to my front just now. I'm going to cheat a little bit and look in F10. Yeah, they're off to the left actually, so let's uh, manoeuvre left. Oh, 
I was probably looking at friendlies. Oh, there we go. Picking up something. Yeah, I can see them visually. So I've got tone. I'm going to press my uncage switch and you'll see that now the seeker head is following the target and I have the high pitched tone. Now I don't have any kind of radar lock so because of this I don't know the range to the target right now. So um, I would have to visually determine how close I am to the target and then I'm going to fully depress the gun trigger all the way to second stage and that will actually fire the missile. So I'm going to get a little bit closer just now and then I'm going to make that shot. And if I look down, unfortunately my stick is kind of in the way, but I can see the, the targets on the on the TID repeater as well. Okay, we're starting to get there, a little bit closer. I'm going to turn in, we're flying pretty fast right now. Mach 1.2, just over Mach 1.2. Sorry about the sound, I'm sure it's getting very annoying. I'm gonna pull the trigger. That's one sidewinder away. Splash. And there you go. Very, very simple. That's how you would employ the missile. Now we're gonna do it with a radar lock now. So I'm going to press my target designator switch. Now it has uh, up and down positions. These are both different kinds of vertical scan. And it also has a forward position, which will do an eight bar 20 degree scan as well. I'm going to do that first. There we go. I've now got a radar lock. I'm going to quickly pause so that you can see exactly what's going on here. The diamond is telling us that we have a radar lock over that target. And because we now have a radar lock, we have closure rate and range showing on the left and right hand sides of the HUD. Also, if I zoom down on my main display here, I have a range scale with maximum range shown here, minimum range shown here, and the range to the target will travel down the left hand side once I'm actually in range. We have this T indicator, that's the position of the target, and I want to have that as close to the center as possible at the time that I fire. We also have the current range scale, 10 nautical miles across this bar, and a currently selected weapon. Sidewinders, three remaining. Let's continue inbound. I'm gonna accelerate, get myself into range for a shot, and then make that shot. And again, the uh, the way you make the shot is the same as before. Pull your gun trigger all the way down to the second detent and the missile will fire. So I'm just waiting for that range indication to show up. I'm assuming it shows up underneath this line. Yep, there we go. So you can see range coming down. We now have this black circle. Now this black circle is called the ASE or allowable steering error. When we make a shot to ensure the best chance of getting a hit, we want the T indicator inside the black circle. Nice and simple. So I'm going to maneuver and fire. That's a long range sidewinder shot, but the, the weapons computer says we're in range, so we should hopefully make that shot. I'm going to descend out of this cloud momentarily. Let's see if we make that kill. That's a sh yep, that's a splash. So there you go. There's the, the employment of the sidewinders by the pilot. Just going to break that lock now. Uh, there's the employment of the sidewinders both without a radar lock and with a radar lock. Now, I didn't cover it. Uh, I should cover it quickly. The target designator. Let me get rid of that sound. There we go. Uh, target designator uh, up will put you into a VSL high, which is a vertical scan, and that will scan between 55 degrees up and 15 degrees up, so quite a, a high scan. Uh, target designator down will put you into VSL low, which will give you a scan between plus 25 degrees and negative 15 degrees. So that's that's going to lag a little bit. It's going to actually aim a little bit below uh, your, your bore sight. And then if you push the target designator switch forward, that puts you into PAL mode. And this is kind of like a HUD scan. It's an eight bar scan, 20 degrees left and right of bore sight. Uh, and actually, if I push it into that mode, you see a representation of the scan with the, the radar diamond moving back and forth there. So that's eight bars, left and right, 20 degrees. Anyway, let's move on to the next missile type. 
Okay, so I've reset the simulation, you join me again in the cockpit, and this time we're going to start off with the Sparrow. Uh, Sparrow is a semi-active radar-guided missile. For this we need an STT track, so I'm going to manoeuvre to place the enemy, um, basically, in front of me. Oh, there we go, I already got a lock there. I just pushed my target designator switch forward into PAL mode. It did a scan, immediately picked up a target, and uh, we're showing them at, uh, what is that? That's looking like about 10 miles. I'm going to accelerate, uh, going full afterburner just now. Uh, as before, you can see range, maximum, minimum, and we've got the T, steering cue, and the ASE. We're actually already within maximum range, so I'm gonna pull the trigger. And Sparrow away. That's a Fox 1. And uh, we should hopefully get hit with that. Now, because this is a semi-active radar homing missile, we must maintain single target track all the way to impact. So let's just continue inbound. Let's maintain this radar lock and see if we can make that hit. I'm going to come out of afterburner just now, actually. I can see another one just above him. And it actually looks like he may have evaded that. So that's a perfectly good demonstration of, of how it should work, but uh, he managed to evade my Sparrow. I'm going to push Weapon Select Switch uh, Depress, and I'm now on Phoenix. And the Phoenixes work in exactly the same way. So I've, I've got him locked up. He's in the ASE. He's within maximum range. Pull the trigger. Now for the Phoenixes, it's a three second depress. And now the Phoenix is away. And again, we need to maintain this STT lock all the way to impact. Let's make sure we get him. Okay, we're gaining on him. You can see the closure rate on the left hand side of the HUD. And his range counting down on the right. Let's see if we can make this hit. Looking good. Phoenix is tracking. That's a that's a splash. That's a splash. Okay. I'm going to depress my pilot lock switch and actually dump that track. And uh, I'm going to go target designator to the right again. I've gone back into a scan. Actually, I'm going to go into a, a high scan and make a turn. See if I can pick up anyone else. I just did. Got a diamond there. Going to go into afterburner and close in on this guy. We're within uh, range. I'm going to pull the trigger. Three seconds. Phoenix is away. Fox 3. Looks like it's tracking. Just maintain this STT. See if we kill him. He's dumping flares. Little does he realize that's going to do him no good. Ooh. Oh. What? Uh, okay. He actually spoofed it. I am very surprised. He actually spoofed it, it would seem. So, with that in mind, let's go... Sidewinder, and box to him if we can. That's a kill. There you go. Finished off with the with the sidewinder. So uh, those are the basics of how you can employ different weapons just as the pilot. Uh, something that I didn't cover was the uh, pilot uh, lock-on mode switch. If I depress that, it will actually lock anything within five nautical miles that's in the current radar scan zone. Uh, and with the with the TID uh, displayed on my HSD here, I can see what the current scan zone is. If there was anything in front of me within five miles, I could push and hold PLM, uh, and I would pick that up. But uh, I find actually the target designator switch is your better bet. Uh, so just a quick reminder of that. Tar target designator up gives you VSL high. Down gives you VSL low. You can see that. The, the, the high is actually outside of the HUD, so you never really see the symbology. Uh, VSL low, you can see that's actually in the HUD. And then VSL forward is giving you uh, that PAL mode, where you have an 8-bar scan, 20 degrees left and right. These are the most useful. Uh, and also keep in mind, missile prep time, 2 minutes for the Sparrow and the Phoenix, if you haven't already done it. And Sidewinder Cool is pretty quick, but you need to make sure it is on before you try and launch a Sidewinder. Otherwise, the quality of your lock will be very poor indeed. So, I hope that you all enjoyed that. 
thank you very much for watching. Uh, quick shout out to Deep Hack's Ground Crew. A big thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel through that system. Um, so far, we have Channel Right, Frantic Stone, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Pink Floyd, Mangash, JR Walker, and Chandro Hedgewald. Thank you very much to all of you. But also thank you to everybody who is subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.